So, what is uh, the modern world? Uh, again, modernism is one of those themes that is used variously depending on which academic discipline one is focusing on. I'm going to use uh, modernity in the historian's sense, right, or in the philosopher's sense, uh, to refer to, in effect, the last half millennium. If we go back, say, to uh, 1500s or so, the last 500 years, we can see that the world has transformed itself, at least the Western world particularly, has transformed itself intellectually, culturally, politically, scientifically, and so forth. So that by the time we get to, uh, or rather if we take the last 500 years as a historical unit, we can see that the kind of institutions that exist, the kind of world that people are inhabiting is dramatically different from the world that existed prior to 500 years ago, and we'll call that the pre modern world. In the modern world, the dominant institutions have been science. We live in a highly scientific culture. Technology uh, has been a defining institution of the modern world. And liberalism, uh, uh, socially and culturally, uh, including de democratic republican kinds of political experiments have been defining institutions of the modern world, and then economically, capitalism and free markets have been the defining institutions. And it's interesting, if you go uh, more than 500 years ago, there's very little science to speak of going on. Of course, there's technology, but nothing on the scale of the technology that's been developed in the modern world. Uh, in the pre-modern world, democratic and republican political institutions are almost nowhere, and free market capitalism is, uh, is almost nowhere, and all of the attendant uh, social institutions, the status of women, relations between the races and different ethnicities and so forth, all of that very different in the modern world compared to the pre-modern world. Okay, now I want now to turn to a table that I've got laid out on the board here and try to put all of that in some philosophical uh, terminology. So what I've got here is three historical eras, the pre-modern era, the modern era, and then we'll get to the postmodern era a little bit. It will define postmodernism against both of these two earlier eras. But if we were to take these two historical labels and track them against these philosophical categories that we've been using over the course of the semester, metaphysics, epistemology, human nature, ethics, politics, and then a historical designation here. What we can do philosophically is see that the pre-modern world, the intellectual uh, uh, foundation of the pre-modern world is very different from the pre intellectual foundations of the modern world and what the postmoderns are going to argue historically and intellectually is that their way of characterizing uh, uh, culture is dramatically different than uh, either the pre-modern or the postmodern. Okay, let's start with the pre-modern world. Uh, the pre-modern Western world, which is essentially the European world prior to 1500 or so, uh, the whole medieval era, what was the defining set of intellectual uh, presuppositions that shaped the institutions of, of the, uh, the pre-modern world? What was the feudal world like metaphysically, epistemologically, and so on? Well, uh, metaphysically, we can say that this world was an intensely religious world, uh, and so metaphysically, the dominant assumption is some sort of supernaturalism, that the natural world is a, is a lower world, a less important world, that this world is the world of God, and all of our energies should be focused on coming to know and understand the higher, truer spiritual reality that is represented by God. Epistemologically, the dominant institutions are uh, re reliance on mystical experiences as captured in revelations, as captured then in holy scriptures, uh, and those then are handed down through the tradition, and everyone in the tradition is expect expected rather to accept uh, the revealed word of, of, of God on faith. And again, there is a bit of a distinction here between those who are more likely to emphasize that we should have faith directly in Scripture versus those who will emphasize that we should have faith in Scripture as interpreted by the authorized uh, tradition, the, uh, the Catholic Church primarily in this case. Human nature, uh, the primary presupposition here is that human beings are born in sin, that they are beings that are fundamentally dependent 
uh, for their being and for their continued existence and for uh, their ability to achieve anything positive in the world on a higher power, that higher power primarily being God or uh, they're dependent on God's institutions, the church, to, uh, to work through them and with them in order to achieve whatever is necessary. Uh, ethically speaking, uh, people are uh, uh, in the medieval world primarily constrained right, by duty. Everybody uh, is whatever their station in life, and there are of course a number of classes, and it's a highly hierarchical society here. But depending on one's station in life, one has an attendant set of duties uh, toward other people. Uh, wives have duties with respect to their husbands, their husbands and the whole family has duties with respect to the feudal lords. The feudal lord has uh, obligations and duties with respect to the king, and the king and everybody in the society have duties with respect to the church and with respect to God. And the, uh, uh, the assumption here is that individuals will be doing their uh, duties uh, sacrificially, everybody is willing to serve. Uh, 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 and to give up uh, uh, and renounce whatever is necessary for the sake of doing their duty. Politically, we characterize the society uh, as a feudal society, but the feudal society is one that is a hierarchical society, uh, characterized by vertical or organization in the uh, political structure. We have the king at the top, then the aristocrats, and then the guilds. Uh, and then the serfs below that. In the religious structure, we have the pope at the top, the cardinals, the bishops, all the way on down to the laity. And so what we have then is a society that is based on a kind of authority or authoritarianism that works in a top-down fashion through the, the hierarchy. And uh, one's political uh, 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 rights and one's political responsibilities are defined by uh, the hierarchy uh, uh, that one finds oneself in a position of. All right, so this set of, uh, of uh, philosophical right, principles here, which we've uh, talked about earlier in the semester, uh, are characteristic uh, of what we call the feudal world, right, broadly speaking, or at least in the Western context, the, uh, the medieval world. Uh, and we can uh, track that in terms of our philosophical label. We can say, broadly speaking, this is the idealist philosophical tra tradition being institutionalized culturally. Uh, and feudalism then is the result. 